Handcuff Releases Under Difficulties, The Remarkable Feats of Harry Houdini, from the Scientific American, July 20, 1912. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Among the well-known vaudeville entertainers must be mentioned Mr. Harry Houdini, whose celebrated feats with handcuffs, straitjackets, and various restraints used to confine the insane and fractious are well known. The public always seems to be interested in seeing the other fellow get away from a tight place, so that it is little wonder that Houdini's audiences are always large. Our attention has recently been attracted to a number of feats which he has been performing in New York and other cities, the culmination of which, perhaps, is the aquatic box trick which we will now describe. On Sunday, July 7th, Mr. Houdini invited a party of newspaper men and those interested in magic to witness a very remarkable box trick on New York Bay. This event was scheduled to take place at a pier on the East River, but owing to police interference, the scene of operations was transferred to the deck of a large lighter which was towed to the dock of the quartermaster's department at Governor's Island. As this was federal property, the police could not interfere with this act. A large wooden box, 40 inches long, 22 inches wide, and 24 inches high was provided. This box was carefully examined and no indication of panels, bolts, or springs was detected. After divesting himself of his outer clothing and after a committee had seen that he did not have any concealed keys or devices for picking the locks of the handcuffs, he submitted cheerfully to be manacled with leg irons, two pairs of handcuffs, and elbow irons. Any of the spectators had the privilege of bringing their own handcuffs if they so desired, as Houdini does not care about furnishing articles of this kind when he is making his more important tests. The cover of the box was removed, and Houdini crouched in it in a stooped position somewhat resembling the doubling up of a jackknife. The cover was then nailed in place with thirty-six wire nails, and the entire box was banded with band iron, or, as it is technically known, packed for export. On each side a length of iron sewer pipe was secured and iron sash weights were introduced into the pipe, thus affording a convenient method of weighing down the box so as to cause it to sink to the level of the water. Two hundred pounds of iron was used. Holes had been bored in it to permit the entrance of the water so that the box itself could be readily submerged. The box was then carefully roped so that no escape from it could have been possible had the nails and band irons been non-existent or have given away. Some of the planks from the lighter were removed, and the box was shoved out on them and was finally dumped in the water. In exactly a minute and ten seconds, Houdini emerged from the water, swimming toward the lifeboat which had been provided. The act was witnessed by thousands of spectators who crowded the decks of three ferry boats. The box was hauled onto the deck with the aid of one of the spars of the lighter, and the box was carefully examined. Nothing was found in it except the useless manacles which had failed to bind Houdini under the most adverse conditions. Considering the danger of this feat, and the entire absence of any paraphernalia such as traps, etc., it appears to be all the more wonderful. This may be regarded as one of the most remarkable tricks ever performed, and it is only regrettable that a feat of this magnitude cannot be tried before a larger gathering of spectators. 